Hi everyone, my name is Sibel Greg Antoma from Greatest Design Consult. This is my WhatsApp contact. You can reach me on this number or call me on any of these numbers, okay? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the composite slabs uh, and your beams, okay? Uh, we are going to go straight right into it. Uh, I will be showing you this is one of uh, the very key important feature that has actually been added to Proto Structure 2024. Uh, like you know, the composite uh, members are when you have a combination of both reinforced concrete and a steel member. Okay, it's very interesting. Um, I'm going to take you through the process uh, first. Uh, one very important thing that you must do is to come to your settings and then when you come to the settings you will see the composite member settings now at this settings you will see the analysis composite degree all of this information can be changed now to suit whatever you want to achieve with your design now, if you check the starts here, default starts, now this is 19 by 100. What that means is that the diameter is 19 and then the height is 100. That is basically what it means. Uh, similarly, for all of them, you can see so many other templates and you can add from these if you want to use another different um, uh, dimension entirely okay um similarly for this you will see the default sheeting now uh you can see this is basically how it is uh the panel thickness you as the engineer you specify the thickness of your panel the rip height however that is basically the height you can see it's very interactive where you have the rip height it tells you you can see everything here based on the um it is well represented you cannot be lost so whatever information you are changing here you can see it in real time and it's showing you uh, by indicating where you can find that information um, okay so uh, this is the panel thickness top rib width and all of that you can play around with this to suit your design okay so this also has another thickness of uh, like a template separately from this is 70 uh, by 915 this is 50 by 980 okay so however this you can just pick or change the information to suit your design okay um the stud you can see it has both that of uh, uniform and that of uh, segmented uh, are here clearance for stud placement at frame ends 50 percent you can change this clearance to um, 50 mm rather uh, you can change the um, the value to whatever value you want to uh, probably use based on your design camber is at 80 percent concrete cover is 30 mm okay so that is that uh, i'm going to click on okay and let's just quickly do a very simple model to demonstrate what you can do with your composite uh, members so if i click on orthogonal axis i will just click anywhere in my window i will click on this and i will click on ok i'm just going to pick a steel column and i will insert all right good now we are here the next thing i'm going to do is quickly just come to you can see i have my frame here on this frame, I have a drop down menu that shows me steel beam, primary composite beam. Now I'm going to be using the primary composite beam and secondary composite beam too for this composite or uh, this uh, class. All right, you can see it's asking me crossing over other frames. Do I want to split the member? I can choose to say yes. If I don't want to split this member, just want it to be one member 
now i can just click no but i will accept that as yes so you can do that uh however you want so i will accept this as well uh i will come back now if you look at these properties here this is the primary composite beam you can see it's telling you what type of beam here is a primary composite beam however you can switch this to probably a secondary beam or whatever uh, steel member you want to use um, this time around even without closing this window you can easily just switch to a secondary member so you can see this is a secondary composite uh, beam now if you look at this it has a smart point at which you can place this secondary uh, composite beams now the span from here to here uh, is actually in um, the first the first distance from the support to this first point here is at 0 0.25 which is at uh, 1 fourth so if you come here this is giving you a 0 0.5 which is at 50 percent of it this is at 75 percent okay this is at 67 percent so however you want to place this so in essence if you are using this you are most likely going to just have up to six uh, of these members so uh, this is basically So you can just use the smart points to insert all of this. Similarly, you can also use what we call the group frame. Now this frame group can help you to insert a secondary or a primary uh, member. Uh, as, um, you can insert um, however the numbers of uh, multiple numbers of uh, these structural members at the same time now if i if i try to insert this uh, secondary beam now all i need to do is to click on the first member and click on the second member now if you look at this property menu here uh, at the right hand corner of my screen you will see that the quantity you can insert in terms of quantity you can also insert in terms of space now, if I choose to use that of quantity, you will discover my quantity based on the span from here to here. I can have up to six of these divided in six places. All right. So um, now, if you notice, after inserting this, it was able to only insert up to four for me because from these settings here, I have generation options that allows uh, from the settings uh, to remove the first and also the last member. So if I don't want this to be that way, I can just bring back this to normal. So if I bring it back to normal and I try to insert again, you will discover that I will insert up to six of these for me. Amazing, right? All right. So can we view this in our 3D? Let's see what we have. Uh, let's come to our view here. And uh, okay, we have the 3D here. Uh, let me come to view and use the tile vertical. Okay, we are here. All right, good. Now let's try to insert our slab. Our composite slab okay now if you look at this from here you have the insert using two diagonal points you have insert using end point okay so this end point means you can easily insert these um, on an irregular shape okay however the shape is you can trace and go around that particular shape okay so, but let's do this by two diagonal points, okay? And let's insert. Sorry, I will take that again.
now this menu will actually pop up for me now this is a preview of what you will have there now I can this is at the top view I can switch this this way to see what I have now this is basically what you have here it tells you the self weight the live load dead load and all of that the roof load snow load we are not designing this for now but uh, as you can see this is basically what we can achieve with this by modeling you can increase the slab thickness that is the uh, composite slab you can increase the thickness the, the, the once you change its thickness automatically everything change you will realize that the self weight has actually increased so this is basically how to go about uh, using two points um, all right let's say for a case where we have uh, maybe like um, let's say we have an irregular or okay uh, let's say we have this this way let me do something a bit different um, all right so this is it so uh let's say i have um, another primary beam here So let me just do something quickly. Let's have a, a secondary composite beam. Remember, this is at uh, this is at 0.7. So let's let's just say. All right, I will remove this one. So let's say we have this this way, and I want to insert a composite slab. Uh, in this case, you know the two points won't work, so I will have to use the insert using endpoint. So all I need to do is just to click, click this point, click this point, click this point and it is inserted so this is basically how to come about this um if you look at this you have slab type you have above the flange okay so you can see there is a preview at the top there showing us what we have above the flange so it's above uh the beam uh, member is entirely above it but this uh, level to primary beam flange now they are actually at the same top level of the flange okay so uh, this is basically so you can pick whichever one you want to adopt based on your design okay so um, that is all you need to do and once you are done with that